Why do we test wells? Well, we want to learn about the reservoir and the well properties, and we want to evaluate the well productivity. What do we get from this well test? Well, confirmation of reservoir discovery, confirmation of well productivity, we can measure the reservoir properties, so permeability over a large scale of investigation, some presence of heterogeneities further away from the well, so by that we mean some changes in reservoir properties further away from the well, and we may want to detect some boundaries. We can get some connected reservoir volume, so we can get some information in general over a large connected volume. With different methods we can measure the reservoir pressure, and finally, we can get some large volume fluid samples for PVT study, and we can assess the skin. In fact, there is no other alternative than well testing to have these two here. So to obtain some large volume fluid samples and to assess the skin under a tangent period. Before starting a test design, we need some clear subsurface objectives. We are doing a test in exploration of puzzle to capture some best quality data and above all to achieve the surface objectives. This is why we're here. Let's quickly have a look at the standard test design. So this is showing the pressure and the rate versus time. So initially after perforation you will expect an observation period. Okay, so you will monitor the pressure trend over time. So this is going to give you an estimate of initial pressure. And you need to be cautious on this. This will be only an estimate. We don't know the fluid weight below the gauge, and we might have some mud as well. This initial pressure will be later refined during the test, and in particular with deconvolution. As well, monitoring the pressure trend over time can give us some information about interference. And this is also in agreement with waiting for daylight to start flying operations. Okay, so then we've got the cleanup period, and we try to clean the well to maximum chalk size. So you need to watch out for fluid contaminants. At this stage in the cleanup, we will produce some fluid contaminants. We might have some H2S, some CO2, some mud. Might have some issue with sand production. So we need to increase the drawdown by steps, and we might have some limits on the drawdown. And in general, we won't have any rate measurement at this point, or at least at the beginning of the cleanup. The test separator will be on bypass, or the flow meter on the test separator will be on bypass. So what you will end up with is a rate of zero. Does it mean that the well was shutty? No, the well was on cleanup. It means that we were not measuring the rate. So you need to rely on the pressure and you need to estimate this rate. In general, at the end of the cleanup, we will uh, put the separator on the flow meters on and we will measure the rate. So you can use this rate data as well to help you to estimate the rate. You can use other methods like uh, the chalk model. If you've got the delta P across the chalk with the well pressure, a chalk setting, you can end up with some estimate of the rate as well. Then we've got our first PBU, and this is the contingency PBU. If we've got any operation issue, and if we cannot flow the well again at this point, then we will have some dynamic rough data from the cleanup, and we will have this first PBU. So on the design, we need to make sure that we've got enough information with this first PB in case we cannot continue the test at this point. Then we might have a state rate increase test or flow out of flow test. And this is there to measure turbulence for gas or gas condensate well or the non-Darcy skin factor. We don't believe in any fancy deliverability test for exploration and appraisal. These were uh, quite some old type of test, and with a PBU analysis we get everything we need. We get the permeability, the different skin elements, etc. We don't need any uh, deliverability test. Then the main flow. We want flow at maximum chalk size, and this is to give us a bit of flexibility. And then finally we'll have the second PBU. Why to PBU? We can quality check the response and we can assess the convolution and obtain a reliable deconvolved response. So this will help us to refine the initial pressure, to see further away in the reservoir, and to improve the understanding of the pressure tangent analysis. 
Okay, so this is a standard type of test. So test design is used to select the rate schedule that has the best chance of achieving the subsurface objectives. And this has to be a bit of iteration. By rate schedule, I mean also the PVU duration. Okay. A test design is also used to answer what-if questions about the behavior of a well and the reservoir. So you may want to do some sensitivities to play on the different well and reservoir parameters and to see the type of response that you get on the derivative. So that will help you to get a bit more understanding of the type of test and the impact of the different parameters, but it's also going to help you, you're going to be better prepared for the operations.